OK. So it's a uh, joint work for Bartomi Dudek, who is hiding somewhere in the back, and uh, Tatiana Slikovskaya, who is hiding somewhere else, I guess. Um, and it's about some problem equivalent to threesome. And um, I guess all of you know what's, uh, what's threesome, but let, let me just show you the definition to make sure that we're on the same page. So there are different versions that are equivalent. The one that I would like to work with, and you will see why I, I prefer this particular version, is as follows. So you have a set uh, X of integers from some universe. Uh, and the question, you should check whether there exist three distinct uh, elements of the set, X1, X2, X3, that sum up to zero. Okay, so that's the version of three sum that I would like. So there's just one set. Uh, also other versions where you have three sets, but I want one set and distinct, distinct elements of this set. Uh, and it's standard that you can assume this universe to be uh, cubic by hashing it down if you are finding randomization. So that's, that's the assumption that I'm making from now on. Okay, and we have this uh, nice conjecture uh, that uh, quadratic time is essentially the best you can do for three sums. So there is no n to two minus epsilon time algorithm. Uh, even you are fine if, if you are uh, randomized algorithms, so expected time is also uh, excluded. Um, so because I'm talking about integers, uh, I want to assume the world run model with words of size log n. Okay, so that's, that's my model from now on. Okay, so we have this conjecture. Mm, but actually, I would like to, to uh, show you a different problem that looks a little bit like threesome, and we'll try to figure out whether it's equivalent to threesome or not. Okay, so, so what's, what's the other problem? I will call it uh, average. So now you, have, you still have a single set X of integers from some universe U, but now the question is whether there exist three distinct elements of this set, x1, x2, x3, such that the third number is the average of the first two numbers. Okay? So that's, that's the problem now. You're given this set, and you should check whether there is a non-trivial progression in this set. Okay? So, so we have seen in the first talk today uh, progression-free sets. So, so now you give me such a set, and I should verify whether it's really progression-free. Okay? So this is the, the average problem. Uh, okay. Mm. Why would you like to, to look at this problem? So apparently it's a kind of well-known interview puzzle so, so to come up with a quadratic time algorithm. So it would be nice to see whether it's actually tight or maybe you can do something smarter than that or maybe it's equivalent to three some, maybe not. Let's, let's see what happens. Okay, um, so in one direction, it's, it's quite easy to reduce average to three sum. So one direction is easy. And let me just show you how it's done, although probably you see it already. So let's say that the numbers uh, in your set are x1, x2, up to xn, okay? So now I, I define uh, a logarithmic number, number of sets ak. So uh, in ak, I put numbers xi uh, such that the kth bit of, uh, of i is set to 1, okay? So yeah, I, I partition x into log n different ways. And now, for each of those ways, for, uh, I construct an uh, instance of three sum. Except that in this instance, I will have three sets instead of one set. So I will seek for an element of the first set, element of the second set, and element of the third set that sum up to zero. So it's a slightly different but equivalent version of threesome. And the set will be AK, uh, the complement of AK, and all numbers in X multiplied by minus two. And you can see that if there is a solution for average, there will be uh, a solution for, for threesome in one of those sets because, uh, well, you need to verify this distinctiveness contradiction, but it's not, not hard to do, okay? So that's a reduction in one direction. Um, okay, so, so I cheated a little bit because I have three sets instead of one set, but it's turned out to combine them into one set by just shifting uh, by some large, uh, large number. That's one way to do it, okay? So you obtain exactly one uh, set, so it's the same formulation. Okay, so in one direction it was easy. So we can reduce average to three sum. Mm, and now the question is, well, what about the other direction? Can you reduce uh, three sum to, uh, to average, okay? And I said it's an interview question, but, uh, and that's why we look at it, but uh, apparently it has been considered before. So the, the one reference that we were able to find is a paper by Jeff Erickson. It's uh, from 99, but I think it hasn't been published, so I'm not sure what's the, what's the story behind the paper. Uh, so he's considering finding long progressions in, in a set. And then he says that it's not known that whether, uh, whether average is three sum hard. And, uh, do, and because of that, uh, maybe we want to call three sum hard problems average hard. So maybe it's, maybe it's harder. So, so that's the question he, he asked. OK, so we would like to figure out, can we reduce three sum to average? So, so do, we need a, do we need an extra conjecture? Or maybe it's all three sum equivalent, and then uh, we don't need any extra conjectures. But before I show you the answer, um, I should mention that actually both three sum and average 
are just special versions of more general problem that's called uh, linear degeneracy testing, or KLDT, so it's K-linear degeneracy testing. So in this problem, you have a linear, uh, linear equation. Uh, I will show you the special case for K equal three. Okay, so you have three coefficients, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and you also have T. And your goal is to check whether there exist distinct numbers x1, x2, x3 uh, from your set, such that the linear combination of those numbers with coefficients alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, is equal to t. So you have a linear equation, and you, you, you search for a solution of this equation over your set x. Okay, so that's called linear degeneracy testing. Um, OK, uh, it would be convenient for me to consider two versions, one partite and three partite. So in one partite, you have just one set. In three partite, you have three sets. And the first number should come from the first set. Uh, the second number should come from the second set. And the third number should come from the third set. Okay. Uh, so this LTT testing uh, problem um, has been considered uh, a lot in the linear decision trees model. So essentially, all the results about k sum in the linear decision trees model generalize to LDT. Uh, you know, usually it's sometimes it's simple, sometimes it's not simple. So in particular, there is a result by Ericsson and then uh, that's been improved by Alan Chazelle that there is a lower band on uh, on this problem uh, in a special in a special model of k-linear decision trees. And uh, it's not so easy for k-sum, and it's even harder for LDT, but it's doable, okay? So, so um, and also the improvements, the recent improvements by Granund and Petty, so they had, uh, they showed that there exists a, a, a shallow decision tree for, for k-sum that also generalizes to LDT. And the more recent improvement uh, by Kane, Lovett, and Morant, they, they, they talk about KSAM, but actually they mentioned ah, actually all of it works for LDT. Okay, so this LDT problem, I'm trying to say that this LDT problem, uh, it's not us who came out with this problem, and it has been considered before, so it's, it makes sense to study it in the context of uh, three sum uh, hardness. Okay? Um, the definitions of this LDT problem are slightly different in those different papers, uh, but I don't want to get into it. So it's, it's essentially the same. Sometimes they don't allow this T coefficient, for instance, that's one, one difference, but it's. Uh, OK, so instead of talking about average, I will talk about general 3LDT. So uh, uh, you either have one set of three, or three sets, you have those three coefficients, and you have the parameter t. And alpha and t are constant. So, so for each combination of alphas and t, you have a separate, uh, separate uh, problem. Okay, so. And now we would like to figure out for, for which of those combinations the problem is hard, and for which of them uh, it's easy. So. For some combinations, it's clear that the problem is easy. So for instance, if uh, you have alpha 1 equal to 0, then there is a simple n log n time alpha. You just sort and you scan with two pointers. It's essentially a two-sum two problem, OK? So, so this is an easy, easy case. So that's one easy case. Uh, another even easier case is when, you, when your t is uh, non-zero and the greatest common divisor of the alphas doesn't divide t then uh, there is no way you can achieve a linear combination that uh, is equal to t, okay? So every instance is a no instance, so there is nothing to do. Uh, okay, so we, ca we call those variants trivial, and everything else is non-trivial. And now our main theorem is that actually all the non-trivial variants of this 3LDT are equivalent, uh, okay? So 3sum would be one of them, and average would be another. So in particular, we obtain that average is 3sum hard, okay? Okay, um, so let me show you how, how this is proven. Uh, so I want to show you one, one trick uh, that I like. Maybe later you can tell me that it's well known and everyone uh, knew how to do it already uh, before that. So um, we have two, two versions, one partite and three partite. So my first claim is that if you have three partite versions, are, it's all quite easy to prove that they're all equivalent when you have three sets. Um, and the reason for that is that you have uh, three sets and you can scale and shift each of them independently. And that allows you to change the, the coefficients and uh, to, add, to change this parameter t. Uh, okay, so this is an easy exercise. Uh, so in the remaining part of the talk, I will try to show you um, how to establish equivalence between one partite and three partite uh, versions with the same alpha and the same t. So if we can do that, then uh, for the non-trivial variants, of course, just, just for those, then we are done. OK. So if you want to reduce one partite to three partite with the same alpha and the same t, you can just use color coding. Because you have, uh, you have one set, and you, are, you seek three elements. 
So you just uh, apply color coding to partition this one set into, uh, into smaller sets, and for, for one of the combinations, you, you will hit this triple that you uh, see, okay? So you use uh, the randomized color coding or deterministic version, uh, you lose some log factors, but that's okay, okay? So this step is easy. Okay, but how do we reduce three partite to one partite? So that, that's what we want to do now. Mm. So you have three sets, and somehow you would like to glue them together. Uh, to make sure that the uh, solution for the new instance uh, exists if I only leave a solution exists for the original instance. Okay, so you need to glue them together carefully. So the natural thing to do would be to glue them as follows. So you take the set AI, uh, and you choose some large constant C, so you scale up AI by multiplying by large constant, and then you add some coefficient uh, gamma I that's not too large, smaller than C, okay? So you scale and then you shift a little bit. Mm. And now the question is, can you, can you come up with, uh, so this is what's being done in 3SUM to, to reduce between different versions of 3SUM. So, um, so now the question is, can you choose this uh, C and gamma I's in such a way that uh, a solution to the one part at instance, so with a single set, uh, consisting of three distinct numbers, because that's how I defined uh, LDT, mm, should satisfy that XI corresponds to an element of AI. So somehow by, by choosing those gammas, uh, you, need to you would like to make sure that XI comes from A1, X2 comes from A2, and X3 comes from A3, okay? And then the question is, can you come up with the, such uh, coefficients? For 3SUM, it's known and it's easy to, to, to design such coefficients. Okay, and now when you think about it for, for a few minutes, uh, you see that uh, sum of alpha I times gamma I must be equal to zero, because you don't want to lose a solution. If some, something has been a solution, it must be still a solution. So those gamma i's must cancel when multiplied by alpha. Okay, so that's one requirement. Um, you need to be a bit careful. Um, some of the alpha i's might be equal, so you have some symmetry that you are not able to break, so you have to define precisely what's the requirement of the solution. I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you one trick, and uh, just trust me that it can be done. Okay, uh, so it turns out that if your t is non-zero, or the sum of alpha i's is non zero, then you can find such coefficients. I think it's not very hard. I will show you the idea uh, in just two lines, uh, two long lines. But, uh, so you think about the, the, the space of all possible coefficients gamma. It's a three dimensional space. And you write down what's forbidden. You write down uh, which, which of those combinations would result uh, in uh, creating something that doesn't correspond to a solution. And it turns out that there is a finite set of such forbidden uh, planes in this 3D space. Okay? So, so that's the, like, the rough idea. And you show uh, what you see is a, is a point uh, such that sum of alpha i times gamma i is zero. So it's a plane in this two-dimensional space. And so, some, some lines on this plane are blocked. Uh, but it's an infinite plane, so, so you will find something with rational coordinates on this plane, and then you scale it up to obtain an integer uh, solution. So that's like a rough idea. You just write down all the, all the equalities that you need to avoid. And then it turns out that uh, if it's a non-trivial uh, version, you can do it if t is not zero and the sum of alpha i's is not zero. Okay, so what if uh, t is zero and the sum of alpha i's is zero, which is the case for, uh, for average, so, so we really need to do something for this case. Uh, so in such case, there is no hope to eliminate solutions that all, in which all three elements come from the same set a, j, because you add the same gamma, gamma j, to, to all of them, and you multiply gamma j with alpha j. And the requirement that I had on the previous page was that it's zero, so it will be still zero. So, so there is no way you can kind of uh, forget about those solutions, okay? So the problem is that it might happen that some aj contains a solution to this equation that you are trying to solve, and um, it's not clear what to, what to do in such case. If, it hap if it's the case that uh, for each aj, aj doesn't have a solution to this equation, then you're okay, this reduction will work, okay? So what you can do? Well, so you can use Belden's uh, construction. So the trouble is that you would like to set AJ to avoid some linear, linear combination, okay? So, so we know that there exists uh, a dense set called Belden sets um, that, that avoids uh, any progression. So, so uh, for any distinct elements A, B, and C, uh, you don't have a solution to this equation, okay? So, so we know that there exists uh, such a set that's quite dense. So I'm not going to read that, but it's n over something small, okay, where n is the size of the universe. And it has been improved later, but I, I don't need the better versions. Okay, so we know that there exists a, a dense set that avoids um, uh, any progression. 
Uh, and actually, when you look at the proof, it can be generalized to avoid any linear combination. So the original construction is for the average. So it's a set that avoids average. If A and B are in the, in the set, A plus B over 2 are not in the set. But if you look at how it's done, and it's well known, I think it's uh, by Ruzsa, that you can generalize this construction to any linear combination. So for any uh, coefficients gamma and the delta, you will avoid uh, linear combination with those uh, coefficients. Okay? And you lose a little bit in the size, but uh, that's okay. So you will have n over 2 of to a uh, big O of square root of log n. So it's still quite dense. OK. Mm. So we know that there exists a, a dense set that avoids a, a, fixed, a fixed linear combination. So what you can do? Well, so you can observe that actually what we want to avoid, what we would like to ensure is that in AJ, you don't have a linear combination with coefficient alpha 1 and alpha 2. Because alpha 3 is minus alpha 1 minus alpha 2. Okay. So the, the condition that you would like to have is that AJ is alpha 1, alpha 2, 3. So it's, it, it avoids a fixed com uh, linear combination. Okay? So that's what we'd like to achieve. But maybe alpha J doesn't have such a uh, such a property. So what, what can you do? Well, you can take your AJ and you can kind of chop it into smaller subsets such that each subset does have this property. Okay? So you split each AJ into smaller sets AJI. And each of them will have this property that uh, it doesn't contain a solution to, to what, you, what you're trying to solve. OK, so from each AJ, you produce uh, a bunch of smaller sets, hopefully not too many. And then you just iterate uh, over every triple. You, you choose one of the smaller sets obtained from A1, one of the smaller sets obtained from A2, and one of the smaller sets obtained from uh, A3. And for each of them, you do the previous reduction that I didn't really show to you, but uh, it worked as long as each set was uh, avoided this fixed linear combination. Okay? So if you can chop this AJ into uh, smaller subsets that are nice, you are in good shape. OK. Mm, but is it possible? By Berens construction, we all know that there exists a dense subset that avoids uh, this fixed linear combination. And now you give me an arbitrary set A, and that I should partition into, small, into a small number of sets that avoid this uh, linear combination. So can I do that? So it's not hard to see that uh, such partition does exist. Mm, it's, not only, it's not the only thing that we need. We need to show that it exists and that we can find it efficiently. So there are two things we need to do. But first, I will try to convince you that it does exist, so, and then we will worry about how to, how to find it. So my claim is that um, for any uh, linear combination uh, gamma and delta and for any universe n, uh, I can find a collection of not too many sets mm, that uh, are nice, so they avoid this, this particular linear combination, and they cover the whole universe. Okay? So my claim is that I can cover the whole universe using not too many sets. Uh, so how you can do that? Well, you can just take this set by, uh, by Berendt, and you shift it randomly, and you repeat that a few times. And by union bound, uh, you, you will obtain that uh, this number of times you need to repeat is not too large. Okay? So it's roughly density times one log factor. Okay? So it indeed shows that you can cover the whole universe using not too many uh, translations of, of, this, uh, of this set, because it's dense, essentially. Okay? Um, okay. So this shows that a partition exists, but how to, how to find it? Th this was not really constructive, because first of all, I said, take Berens set, but the set is defined over the universe of size n cubed. My, my reduction cannot work in cubic time. It needs to work in linear time, or maybe n, n, n log n. Okay, so I cannot, I cannot afford to construct this set. So I need something more efficient. Um, so fortunately, th th this set has a simple, uh, simple structure. I'm, you have seen a marginal construction in the first talk, uh, if, if you managed to, to <laughs> read this part. Uh, essentially, you take um, your universe consists of numbers, and you represent the numbers in some base, and you look at the digits. And that's, that's the only thing that's going on in this construction. So there's a simple condition on the digits in some base. So it means that we can implement an oracle that, uh, given a number x, will uh, efficiently tell us whether this x belongs to, the, to this nice set S in like logarithmic time, let's say. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's assume that we have this procedure. So, so what to do next? Uh, well, so, so now we just repeat uh, enough times uh, choosing this random shift, and then I ask the oracle about uh, a number shifted by this random shift. Okay? So if you are fine with, uh, last, uh, with Monte Carlo randomization, this is, this is all you need, because with high probability, partition uh, the whole set. Um, okay, so this is Monte Carlo. We would like to have uh, Las Vegas, I guess. So this can be de-randomized, uh, and the trick is to use uh, conditional expectations. So, so by this argument, you can, you can see that um, there always exists a single shift for which you, you eat a large chunk of, your, of the remaining part. 
okay, and to repeat uh, sufficiently many times. So you only need to random randomize this procedure. So given a set, find a single shift that takes away uh, um, one minus uh, one, over, uh, one over log n fraction of, of the remaining set. You know that it exists, uh, and you can randomize using conditional expectations. So instead of choosing a random shift, uh, like all of it, you go bit by bit, and you fix the bits one, one by one, and you calculate from uh, conditional expectations. So, so that's not, not very hard. You need to extend this oracle a little bit. You, you need to look a little bit into the structure of this set, but it's not, not too hard. You do some dynamic programming on the, on the digits. OK, and I should wrap up. Uh, so that was for 3 LDT. So we show that average is 3 sum uh, equivalent under subquadratic reductions. Uh, so the natural question is why 3? Why not K LDT? Uh, well, because we couldn't uh, show uh, this for K LDT. For some combinations of parameters, uh, this, this reduction works. There is no issue. But for this t equals 0 and sum of alpha i is equal 0, uh, there is no dense set that avoids, uh, um, for example, if you look at uh, equation x1 plus x2 is equal to x3 plus x4. You can, there is no dense set that avoids uh, all, such, uh, and all such solutions. So there is the same proof will not work. Okay? And this suggests that, um, so it's all very recent, so we don't have a, uh, like a good understanding yet. Um, Apparently, people working on uh, additive chromatorics, uh, so they look at different equations and they study density. Uh, and they talk a lot about something called genus of, of an equation. So you have some linear equation. And the genus is the largest G such that you can partition the coefficients into groups. And in each group, they, they sum up to 0. So for k equal 3, the, the genus is 1. You cannot partition. Uh, but for k equal 4, it will be 2. And this seems to be like the, the maybe when problems become harder than, than the others. So maybe it depends on the genus, but we don't really know it. So maybe you will know. <laughs> okay, so that's it. And if there are questions, I'm happy to answer.